All right, hello everyone. My name is Abbas, and here at MTI, I have with me what I think is one of the best rookie teams this year, Team 2700, Snap, from Texas. I have Joey, Caitlin, and Cyrus, and they're going to be talking about this amazing machine and more on First Updates Now. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. First Updates Now is supported by Stryker Careers. If you are a college student or recent graduate looking for an incredible internship, take a look at Stryker. Stryker provides a housing stipend, great pay, and an opportunity to work with state-of-the-art medical technology equipment. Discover why so many FIRST alumni are coming to Stryker for their internship or career at careers.stryker.com. What if hands-on learning today led to real-world application tomorrow? MSOE. Rethink what's possible. Joey, let's start off with your drivetrain. I mean, there's just so much to talk about this robot. I think the best way to do it is just bottom up. You guys don't have a standard drivetrain. I mean, first of all, you can see everything. It's Lexan. Let's talk about why that uh, design decision. Yeah, so uh, when designing the robot, we wanted to make sure that all of the mechanical components could be seen uh, and admired because we went for also an aesthetic uh, choice with this robot uh, in addition to the functional. So we decided to make all of the plates out of clear plastic so that way you can see through all of the custom milled aluminum pulleys and gears. All right, yeah. And you know, you're mentioning custom milled aluminum pulleys and gears. I'm looking at your robot. Everything's just so faced nicely. It just seems everything has just top tier manufacturing. And you know, so what manufacturing capabilities do you guys have? Uh, we use a CNC mill uh, that we have in, uh, in my garage. Uh, and we use that to mill all of our all of our custom parts. Awesome. And I noticed you guys have some sort of rocker design, maybe not suspension directly, but indirect through gravity or something like that. Do you want to talk about that? Right. It's um, um, we, it was inspired by Mars Rover. Uh, it's a half rocker suspension mechanism that incorporates the odometry wheel, which we use for position tracking, into a traditional mechanism drive base. Awesome. Yeah, that's super fantastic. And you guys are running four motors for your drivetrain. What gear ratio are these motors at? Uh, the bare motors are 13.7 to 1, but then through external gearing, we go to about 14 and a half-ish. I see. All right. Yeah, cool. I'm sure teams will learn a lot from your drivetrain. You know, this is not just a simple drivetrain. There's definitely so much to unpack here. But let's go on to the rest of the robot. Uh, let's talk about your intake first, right? First thing you do when you collect freight is you use your intake. How has your intake changed throughout the season, right? From day one to now, what's different? Well, we went through a big uh, evolution process over the course of the season. So originally the intake was just a crude flapper intake, something that we knew we could get uh, made and working by the first tournament. And then this combination pincer roller design that's on the robot now uh, came, play, uh, took an effect on the robot in Meet 3. I see. Uh, and it was made this way such that it could hold all of the elements in the game. Uh, using passive suspension with rubber bands, it's small enough to hold the ducks and also big enough to hold the balls and our team's scoring element. So the one intake handles uh, all of the manipulation on the field. Yeah, and I think one thing you guys do really well that I haven't seen a lot of other teams do is have hard stops for your intake, right? So even though you have suspension, it can't just swing all the way out. It's really constrained, so you guys are just as wide as you need to be, which is definitely super clever. All right, something I'm sure sure everybody cannot wait to hear about is your arm. I mean, it's crazy. There's just no other robot like it this year. How did you guys decide to go for a design like this and, you know, what went into it? Well, we decided to have an arm because we wanted something that could extend and do basically everything and for the robot to move minimally. So we wanted to, uh, the robot to move as little mass as possible. And um, our arm has two cycloid gearboxes right here and right here. This one is a 50 tooth and this one is a 32 tooth. And it sits on top a um, anodized aluminum turntable right here. And it has 12 roller bearings underneath it that supports it when it's fully extended so that we don't have any type of slop or wobble. Yeah, no, I mean, that's just simply incredible. And I can't tell you the last time or if I've ever heard of an FTC team using a cycloidal gearbox. How did you guys decide that? You know, where did you hear about it? How did you determine like, yeah, this is something we can make happen in FTC? Well, I actually um, was visiting the Jelly Belly factory and they had um, similar type of arms where they were picking up and delivering different types of jelly beans. So I was really inspired by that to make an arm of um, for, for this team. And 
Um, I just found cycloid gearboxes to be the best option when fully extending um, in the way that we do so far out. Yeah, I mean, wow, what a story, right? That's just incredible. And uh, let's talk a little bit more about your turret, right, your turntable. You guys use this when you're duck cycling, I mean, when you're just playing the normal match, really just any part of the game. How has this changed since the beginning? Yeah, so we originally didn't have the 12 roller bearings. We just had this turntable that we bought online, um, but we found that um, without the roller bearings, it had a lot of slop when it was fully extended. Um, in addition to the weight being um, undistributed, so we did a lot of weight calculations to find the center of mass oh, wow. so that um, a robot wouldn't tilt or anything like that. Yeah, and I mean, I'm about 100% sure that a robot like this can't just be done freehand. You guys obviously had to design some of these parts in a 3D modeling software. So, you know, what do, what modeling software do you guys use? And, you know, does it you do cam as well or do you, you do cam in a different software? Um, I think we cam in SolidWorks and we design everything in SolidWorks as well. So wow. we custom design and manufacture everything, which allows for a faster iterative design process for us. Yeah, all right. Uh, and I think the last hardware component that I really want to talk about is your guys' carousel mechanism. You know, at first it may just seem simple, but during matches, I mean, I see it just spring out, and I'm like, wow, that is so cool. So, yeah, can we talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so originally the carousel mechanism was just bolted onto the frame of the robot. It didn't extend at all uh, for the first iteration, but then when we were going, getting into our AML League Meet 3, as well as AML Championships, we realized that there was a, a competitive advantage to be gained if we could also deliver ducks to not, uh, not only to the field, but also deliver them to the Alliance Up. And so we thought of different ways to do this for our robot to be able to span the gap, and we had already really maxed out the capabilities of the arm. It's already cantilevered four and a half feet. So we realized that the only way to do it would be to get the carousel mechanism further away from the robot, which had to be done with some kind of an ex extension such that the robot would still fit inside the 18-inch box at the beginning of match play. So we decided to go with a lead screw design that just guts through the center of the robot uh, because it's compact, it's efficient, uh, and it's very quick for deployment in Endgame. Yeah, I mean, your robot, while it is very large in overall size, everything is just so well packaged. You know, nothing's left, on, no stone is left unturned. You guys just have done an excellent job hardware-wise. But, you know, not only hardware, you guys' software as well. Every time I see you guys drive and I see just how simple, like how fluid everything is, I'm like, yeah, there has to be a lot of software that went into this. So. Cyrus, you want to talk a little bit about that? Yes. Um, so something that actually makes driving very easy um, is that we have something that we call snap two positions. These are semi-autonomous functions that we actually use in our teleop. Uh, for the drivers, it's just a single button. So all it'll do is either bring you to pick up more blocks like in the warehouse, or it'll bring you to like to deliver to the shared hub, or deliver to the top of the alliance hub, or like even pick up ducks in endgame and then deliver them to the top of the alliance hub. Um, so that was something huge, like. Because I'm the person who's driving the arm, so that just made it very easy. Uh, and another thing is, uh, so we, we use inverse kinematics to like go ahead and like you like map out everything that we how we like use the arm and stuff. Um, uh, so we use that to calculate the positions. Uh, and then something nice about that is that using the controls. Um, so the 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 uh, motors control theta and theta two, um, like uh, as like the joints on the arm. Sure. But the nice thing about this is that um, the joysticks. Uh, oh wait, here. Let me switch to the right mode. Uh, the joysticks. Whenever I move one, it'll move it in and out uh, with just one joystick. Sure. So one controls the distance from the robot, and one controls the height. Wow, that that's super clever. Yeah, and I mean, I'm sure combined with your uh, semi semi automations, that's super super useful and leads to you guys having this many uh, cycles in matches. And what about the autonomous period? You know, are you guys how are you guys tracking your position? You mentioned odometry, but how do you use that odometry information? Are you guys using some library like Roadrunner? Or are you guys writing your own code? What's going on there? Uh, so yes, we do. We use Roadrunner. Um, so a lot of that, like we find it nice, is that we're able like to track like, hey, are we in the warehouse? Because um, something in our autonomous is. Uh, we we want to leave the warehouse as soon as we pick up a block. We don't want to waste time. So as soon as we go 27 seven inches from where we start, which is into the warehouse, uh, that's when we say, hey, we can go back out and then deliver this block. Yeah, and you know, I think one question that I that's been on my mind that I want to end this interview is, uh, you know, a team like a uh, team such as yourself with such excellent uh, manufacturing capabilities and design intuition, programming, just really all around package. In the future, do you think you do you think you guys will go for like really crazy innovative designs like this while still having high scoring mechanisms, or something a little more traditional that lends itself to a more optimized, you know, world's winning level design? Uh, I think. 
when uh, doing robotics, uh, each team is going to get something different out of it. And I think part of our team philosophy is not only do we want to make something that is efficient, but we also want to we want to learn new things. And so we like to experiment with these complex and sophisticated designs. Uh, and, and so I think in the future we probably will continue to do uh, abstract designs like this uh, that still continue to be efficient. Yeah, no, I mean, that's really the answer I was hoping to hear. That's super impressive. I mean, this is not just like some high school project. You guys have really taken this to a full engineering experience, something that I'm sure is going to be super, super useful for you guys in the future. Thank you. Reporting for First Updates Now, I'm a boss. Thanks to Stryker Careers for their support in this video. If you are a college student or recent graduate looking for an incredible internship, take a look at Stryker. Stryker provides a housing stipend, great pay, and an opportunity to work with state-of-the-art medical technology equipment. Discover why so many FIRST alumni are coming to Stryker for their internship or career at careers.stryker.com. What if hands-on learning today led to real-world application tomorrow? MSOE. Rethink what's possible.